Hey guys, Matt here from the Jio Nation, cycling around the world on a recumbent trike. For Cycle Sunday, we're gonna talk a little bit about pedals. Now, I probably have around 20,000 kilometers into this ride here, and in that time, you could say I've had an evolution of the way that I use my pedals, the things that I've added on, and the pedals themselves. So let me discuss a little bit about how I started and how I am right now. When I started riding, I was a dedicated clip-in guy. I liked the idea of clipping my feet into the pedals. Obviously, on every crank, I had a little bit more pullback. I could actually use that force to help me up and down hills and all around. And at that time, I was uh, heavily loaded down, so I really felt like I needed as much uh, connection to my pedals as possible so that I could use every force that I had available to me to propel me forward. My pedals were metal Shimano's that were uh, clip-ins on one side and then flats on the other. They weren't these, they were the all metal style. And I had a, a pair of Shimano shoes. They did well for me for quite some time. I found though that on the long rides that I would have fully clipped in, my feet would go numb. My toes would actually start losing feelings and I have pins and needles in my feet. The only way for me to circumvent or cure this problem was to unclip and then move my feet around the pedal as I rode. So I, I sort of uh, played with the position of my foot on the pedal and it wasn't one movement. It was literally like sort of adjusting them as I ride. What I thought that would do was spread the, the point of the most pressure around my foot and it would keep it from becoming so numb. And it ended up working. It wasn't long before that problem was such a pain in my foot, so to speak, that I got rid of my uh, clip-ins altogether and I just never, never clipped in anymore. Another problem I had is I ended up tearing my meniscus. I was highly overloaded. I was going up and down mountains and it was putting a lot of stress on my knees and my, my parents and family have some knee issues. I was able to go to physical therapy and get my meniscus under control and when I got back on the road, I was one, much lighter and two, adding a couple of things to my setup to make my pedal situation a little bit easier. This here is what's called a knee saver or pedal extender. It's made of marine grade stainless steel. It won't rust and it won't tarnish. And I think it has helped me in allowing my knees a little bit of an easier ride. The pedal extender is just that. It extends the pedal this way on this side and it extends the pedal this way on this side. Basically, your hips and your feet should be standing directly over themselves. That's the way you are when you're standing in the most comfortable position. Your legs aren't out too far and your legs aren't actually pointing in uh, to the center. They're literally spaced at the exact same width that they are attached to your hips. On a lot of bicycles, if you have wider hips, your legs end up coming to the center in order for your feet to get onto those pedals. And that's an awkward situation physically for your legs to be in when you're pedaling. The knee savers move your feet slightly out and allow you to get more of that natural position of your feet positioned over your hip joints. And so the knee savers are supposed to help that situation and keep your knees from having any unnatural movements uh, when you're pedaling. I added the knee savers after my therapy, so it's a little bit hard to say that the specific addition of those knee savers has helped me substantially. I can't endorse it 100% because I, I haven't had a perfect system for testing them. I do know that I haven't had as many knee issues after I've added them. I don't know if that's because of the knee savers along with the lighter weight, along with my new riding style and different things. But I would have to say that it's my educated guess that they have helped me and adding them to my ride was something that didn't cost too much. It was an easy thing to do and I think it helped me so why not do it? I also changed my pedals. They were um, the Shimano metal uh, pedal that was metal on both sides and I have since changed them to these Shimano flats. What these allow me to do is ride uh, barefoot, which is something that I like to do. Also, riding with my shoes is a little bit more comfortable. They're a lighter weight because they uh, actually have some like plastics and high, uh, high strength polymers in them. 
uh, but they also have the clip option. A few people have asked me why am I still riding with clip ends now that I'm not using any clip ends and to be honest I'm not quite sure. I think I just like the ability to clip in if I wanted to even though I've kind of distanced myself from that possibility. If I do ever want to clip in in the future the option is there for me. A few people also have asked me about uh, leg suck. Uh, I think that's how, how you guys have talked about it in the trike world. It's where you don't clip in and you might lose your feet off the pedals and then your feet get dragged underneath the trike and then you end up breaking your leg or breaking your foot or you know getting yourself in some sort of a, a troubled situation. It can be painful from what I hear. I will tell you that I have never lost my feet from the pedals. I feel very safe and very controlled with the way that my feet uh, operate my pedals and I don't know if it's just the, the way that I pedal or, or my body size or what, but I've never ever had the worry or feeling that my legs are going to come off those pedals and end up going under the trike. Now one of the things that most people consider strange about the way that I ride is where I put my foot on the pedal. Ordinarily you'd ride in this sort of a position here where your toes are almost to the front of the pedal itself. This is how most people ride a bicycle. What I found when I first started riding is to move a little bit farther forward. This is where I was normally clipped in before I tore my meniscus. And so I would ride in this position here. After I uh, tore my meniscus and after my toes kept falling asleep, I would unclip and move my feet slightly po pointing them outward, slightly pointing them inward, very slightly, as well as moving them farther forward, almost moving them to where the joint of my heel was sitting right over the point where the, the pedal connects to the crank arm. And what this allowed me to do is feel really comfortable, feeling like there was a, a direct transference between where my leg was and where it connected to the crank arm. And so I would ride like this, and uh, what it ended up happening is I'd have a lot less end of the day fatigue with regards to my feet and my ankles and my knees. It's a very strange thing, and I don't recommend it per se because it does run counter to uh, cycling logic, but it just works really well for me. Here you can see also that the pedal extenders allow me to move my feet out a little bit farther from center making it so that the width of my feet are almost in line with the width of my hip joints. So yeah, I would ride around quite a bit like this, moving farther forward and as well moving farther back throughout the entire day. By changing it throughout the entire day, I found that I could take stress off of different areas that might have been feeling a little bit uncomfortable. So I'd ride a little bit like this and then I'd shift a little bit farther forward. I'd ride a little bit like this. I'd shift it down, I'd ride a little bit like this, I'd shift it up, I'd ride a little bit like this. Sometimes I'd point it a little bit in, sometimes I'd point it a little bit out. Doing so and in, in making a variety of, of foot positions allowed me to have more of a relaxed ride and at the end of the day when I would stop I felt a lot more comfortable and, and I didn't have as much pain in my knees. Now this is just the way I do it, I don't recommend this to be the way that you do it. But you can try it out. If you do have problems similar to the way that I have problems, maybe it could help you out. I will say that I did have a meniscus tear, I was having knee problems, and I have hereditary gene problems in my family, and I've been able to kind of control that pain, control the stress on my knees by doing those things that I described here today. If uh, you have any questions, you send them to me, I'll try and answer them. If you have any ideas for the next Cycle Sunday topic, you let me know and I'll try to do that next week. I'll try every Sunday to do a cycle oriented tip or suggestion or show you something that I do on the road that I find that helps me. I'll catch you next week for Cycle Sunday. In the meantime, watch my daily vlogs and my videos as I travel around the world. Currently, I'm in Taiwan and I'll be heading out in a few days to continue my ride. So, Jayo, talk to you later.
Next time on the Jayo Vlog. It's going to develop? It's yeah. actually the, the ghost months. Can we drink our coffee in a pig stall? So this is a breed between a melon and a pineapple. Annie's factory. She has a decal factory making decals. You could see it light out for sure. This is, I gotta get a Jayo flag with this. <laughs>